notes. People building. No, I think I think, I think they probably over oversold that, but the, I think the opponents also I think were. I think they were kind of misleading in some of their numbers. I mean, because I looked at it, oh, we're on. Um, and like it may take like most owners would have plenty of um, space to do that, even with the forest. Make sure there's the box. I mean, the whole thing has been. Even if it's there, it's open. You know, like even them talking about affordability, like how much it's going to increase or decrease affordability. Like that's not. No, there was some dirt. Well, you can't control. No, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Like those little libraries. There's so few yeah. houses that are mostly yeah. libraries. Yeah. It'd be interesting to ask them if they've dealt with it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. No, I was surprised that it was unanimous. I I was surprised that it was unanimous. I mean, planning commission recommended denial. Right. Of course, that's you know we're advisory, but yeah. Uh, as you know, I've represented many, many applicants before city council, some of them coming on the, the heels of a recommendation for the now. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, gentlemen, how you doing? How's it going? All right. Good. How you doing? Yeah. All right, how are you? Great. So I think it's kind of rare to see that. Hey, Brian. Yeah, that it was like that big a term. Yeah. You're a poll worker. Hey. All right. They, well, they approved the oh, yeah. People having trouble getting here. Mm -hmm. Nervous time because I came in from the west. I was saying, <laughs> I don't know. I come in, in I come in Roxborough, you know, Mangum Street up that way, and it won't, but I usually get here about five o'clock. I don't know. Somebody said it was something. Yeah, look, look, cause it happened. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. Just, and then so I had to keep on around the beach. I had someone else. That was really surprising. I don't know what it is. Somebody had like come by it early. It seems like people are in favor and against. Uh oh, I knew this was bound to happen. That this was coming. How many do we got? What's that? That's next one. You got eight. Right. Oh, it's yes. And there were. That's for you. I. Thank you. Don't. Have you seen the new plan? Or they're down to 44 this, units. I don't recall there being too many people. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good on this. You know, I tried to tell them that. Contingent. Well, then unload a gun. Bring them more. Because when that little bang flag comes out, I'll damn follow with beer and bread. <laughs> well, you can, you can eat bread. Just eat like me. I eat that. It's whole wheat. Or, or limit as possible, or, or give up the bread and eat yeah. sweet potato. I love baked sweet potato. Yo, I love baked sweet potato. We have yeah. enough of us here. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. Yeah, it is. I saw what I ever The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. And you should know that the elected officials have the final say on any of the issues before us this evening. Mm -hmm. As always, if you wish to speak on an agenda item, please come up and sign up on the sheets to my left. Uh, for those of you who wish to speak, please state your name and your address clearly into the microphone. And each side has 10 minutes to speak for or against any of the proposals in front of us this evening. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative. So if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Alturk. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Ghosh. Present. Commissioner Bryan. Present. Commissioner Harris. Present. Commissioner Busby. Present. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Kinchin. Here. Commissioner Hornbuckle. Present. Commissioner Van. Present. Commissioner Williams. Here. Uh, and staff notes that Commissioner Satterfield, Hyman, and Gibbs have excused absences. Great. Thank you. We now have the approval of the minutes and the consistency statements from the April 10th, 2018 meeting. Commissioner Bryan. I move approval of the minutes and consistency statements as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, do we need to make a motion for the three excused members as well? I so move. Second. Yeah. You might name them. Uh, we have moved and seconded the excused absence request for Commissioner Hyman, Vice Chair Hyman, Commissioner Gibbs, and Commissioner Satterfield. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 
Uh, we will move to any adjustments to the agenda. Ms. Smith? Um, good evening, Grace Smith with the Planning Department. There are no adjustments to the agenda that staff is aware of. And we can affirm that all legal notice requirements have been carried out and executed in compliance with state and local law and affidavits for such are on file in the Planning Department. Thank you very much. Commissioner Bryan. Um, if possible, under new business, I have a brief question I'd like to ask. We can, we can add that. And would you like to move the amended agenda with your new business item? I so move. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. We have uh, two zoning map change cases in front of us this evening, and we will lead off with the 3736 Garrett Road case that is case Z170044, and we'll start with the staff report. In zoning case 170044. In the zoning case, uh, associate zoning case Z170044. Yes. Okay. Good evening. I am Jamie Sunyak with the Planning Department. I will be presenting case number Z170044. This is 3736 Garrett Road. <clears throat> the applicant is Dan Jewell from Coulter Jewell Thames. The property is um, currently within the county jurisdiction portions of it, and it is, there is a pending annexation case associated with it. The site is 6.047 acres. Um, the current zoning is residential suburban 20, and the applicant is seeking a change to planned development residential uh, with a density of 3.969. The proposal is single family development up to uh, 24 homes. This is the aerial map, and it shows the properties highlighted in the red hatched area. <clears throat> there are two properties associated with this, 3736 Garrett Road, which is um, located with the street frontage, and there's a single family house. And then the property behind it is 3738 Garrett Road, which is essentially a landlocked piece of property, and there appears to be a small barn on it, um, in addition to it being heavily uh, wooded. The properties are located on uh, the west side of Garrett Road, just north of the intersection with um, Cottonwood Drive and south of Pickett Road. This is the existing conditions map that is provided in the development plan. As mentioned, the larger property, which is about four acres in size, has the single family home on it, and the second track um, is, is heavily wooded with the barn. In the staff report, there are a number of photos that um, have been taken to give the Planning Commission an idea of the area and uh, the conditions surrounding it. Um, just to highlight a few of the photos, um, starting from the top left and working right, uh, the first picture is the subject property um, that shows the existing house. Then you've got um, several houses of worship uh, located on Garrett Road, and then there are some examples of the um, single-family uh, residential neighborhoods, multi-family residential neighborhoods, um, all within close proximity to um, the site. This is the future land use map. Um, the area is shown uh, as a um, yellow shade. It's a low-density residential, which is um, up to four dwelling units per acre. And that is consistent with what the applicant is requesting. Here is the context map, um, which shows the existing zoning as RS20, and the applicant is proposing a PDR with a density of 3.969. Um, staff has reviewed this request and uh, determined that it is consistent with the requirements 
of the Unified Development Ordinance. In terms of the request um, specifically, again, the density 3.969 up to 24 single family dwelling um, units. Uh, the development plans shows a minimum street yard of 15 feet, a committed tree coverage of 20%, um, an open space protection of 16%, and a maximum building height of 35 feet. This is the development plan, which depicts all of these items in addition to the two access points um, and some of the transportation related commitments. In terms of the commitments, um, I mentioned the number of units and there are uh, two traffic related commitments, one dealing with the installation of additional asphalt for a bicycle lane and an additional um, turn lane on Garrett Road um, for the site access. Staff has found this request to be consistent with the um, uh, low density residential FLOM, as well as consistent with 2.31B contiguous development, 232A infrastructure capacity, 814D um, development review and adopted regional bicycle plans, and 11.1B, 11 point, uh, 11 which is the adequate school facilities. Um, staff determines that this request is consistent with the development plan, with the comprehensive plan, and all applicable policies and ordinances. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We will open the public hearing, and we have one individual signed up to speak. And it's Mr. Dan Jewell in favor of the proposal. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairperson Bryan and fellow commissioners. I am Dan Jewell with Culture Jewell Thames. Uh, uh, we are working with my clients, Bryce and Powell, uh, Walker Harris, who are Durham based uh, developers. In fact, uh, Walker is a, a Durham na native, has worked here all of his life. Um, we're before you making what we think is a modest request for rezoning this property to allow for a single family residential community. We are committing to single family, four units to the acre, uh, and a maximum of 24 units. As Jamie said, the proposal is in keeping with the comprehensive plan, so does not require a future land use map amendment. Uh, because of that, uh, a neighborhood meeting was not required, but we chose to have several. Uh, we reached out to the Garrett Farms folks last fall. Their homeowners association uh, organized the first neighborhood meeting. We had maybe 20 people there. It was pretty well attended. Uh, we listened to the neighbors' questions and, and comments and concerns about uh, buffering, setbacks, uses, access to their neighborhood, and stormwater management. Uh, we went back in front of them about a month ago and had a second second meeting where we had almost as many people showed up. And uh, what they told us was they appreciated that we had listened to them and, uh, and taken care of their concerns. Uh, some of you may know there's actually a 101 unit subdivision which uh, did not need a rezoning, uh, has a site plan approval, and is in the final stages of getting construction drawings approved directly to the north of this parcel and north of, of Garrett Farm. So it will sort of complete the intersection, the corner of, of, uh, of Garrett Road and Pickett Road to the north. Um, it, it, uh, <laughs> when it's all built out, this parcel before you today, the parcels before you today will sort of be a, a donut hole now surrounded by single family residential, including Garrett Farms, which we all know was developed years ago. There's some townhouses and, and, and apartments farther south. And then we have the two big churches, Crested Academy and uh, uh, Church of the Good Shepherd right across the street. Uh, that new neighborhood to the north has been designed with access to Pickett Road and Garrett Road, but most importantly, they uh, have a stub uh, required by the UDO for connectivity going into this parcel, sort of in the northeast quadrant. Uh, and we've shown that as a text commitment on this, this plan. Uh, we've been coordinating with their designer uh, to have the streets meet up in the same point, 
make sure the water and sewer are coordinated and also the stormwater management. They will have a little bit of water flowing onto our property. We will accommodate that in our required stormwater management pond. Uh, I wanna be clear, uh, our proposed neighborhood does not have any <clears throat> vehicle connections to Garrett Farms. It only connects to Garrett Road on the east side and uh, uh, the new neighborhood that's under, will soon be under construction on the north side. And our driveway will align with the driveway, which the Church of the Good Shepherd, which is across the street. So um, in the uh, uh, spirit of brevity, that concludes my comments. Um, we hope you'll agree with the staff that our proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan, other policies and ordinances, and can find to make a positive recommendation to council and uh, thank you for your time, and we're all happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Would anyone else like to speak during this public hearing? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Any questions or comments from commissioners? Commissioner Miller? You want me to go ahead? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Dan, I was looking at your, uh, in your development plan, in the existing conditions and you, you've got your tree save along the southern and western boundaries um, and it looks like there might be some at the top too i just don't if 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 i'm understanding the the, the drawing that you have here it doesn't look like there are very many trees in the tree save area uh, believe it or not <laughs> on the uh, the western side tree save area there are a lot of trees and a lot of bamboo we've actually been working with the uh, uh, Ms. McCandless next door, and uh, she wants to see if we can work together to clean up some of the bamboo so that the trees will grow back. Uh, evidently, that was that was a pasture a long time ago. Um, but the, the tree save area is actually labeled tree coverage area so okay. that we know we will need to replant rather robustly to meet the uh, ordinance requirements for, for tree coverage. All right, thank you. Because mm -hmm. for the most part, the, the large part of the property is, is clear. Yes. Um, and I am assuming that you plan to demolish the existing house. Yes, the, the existing house will go away. We are actively looking for somebody who might want the house. So if you have anybody in mind, send them to us. Is that is that a Pickett family house? It's a Garrett family. Garrett family house. Yes. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Bryan. Thank you. Um, I have a few comments uh, concerning the staff report. On page four, section D, I think the second sentence needs to be revised because it speaks of industrial land use designation and this isn't industrial. Good catch, thank you. And also I think it's attachment six rather than attachment five that provides the comprehensive plan policies. Thank you. And the other point on the reasonable and in public interest, I don't disagree with what you're stating, but since the uh, current zoning also is in line with the future land use map, it seems like a very weak reason to put for this I'm having reasonable. trouble hearing you, I'm sorry. Um, I don't disagree with your conclusion about reasonable and in the public interest, but since the current zoning is also consistent with the future land use map, this seems like a pretty weak reason. That, you know, and I also didn't find it listed among the various reasons listed in section 1.2.2. Oh, excuse me. And, uh, but uh, yeah, that's just my opinion. I do have a question for the applicant. Uh, Sir, Mr. Bryan. Um, I don't know if it's possible for you to do this, but there were some lovely big trees around that house. And I'm not asking for any commitments or anything. I'm just expressing my hope that maybe you could save one or two of them. We will, we will do the best we can. We will Thank do the best we can. You. Thank you. Commissioner mm -hmm. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Jewell, I'm just curious uh, for your uh, client, do we do you have a sense of the price points for these proposed single family homes? Uh, I, I, I don't know that we do yet at this point. They'll I'm sure they'll be consistent with uh, houses of a similar size in, in uh, Garrett Farms, maybe maybe a little more because they'll be be newer houses. And do you have a sense of what those what those prices are? I, I, I do not. I do not. Maybe somebody has looked at a house in Garrett Farms recently and can answer that question. Commissioner Al Turk. Thank you, Chair. I have a couple of questions for staff. Um, one is an, just a minor clarification. Um, in attachment eight, the just in the assumptions, traffic, traffic and impact and stuff. Um, you say that this is based on 10 single family lots, the current designation. Should that be more than that if it's RS20 six on six acres or is that? It would be, it would be somewhere in the range of 11 or 12 okay. units. Okay, so that's, I was, just wasn't sure if the math's right. Um, my second question is for Bill. Um, so we, we've now gotten, we get commitments from developers now that to um, add four feet of asphalt for a future bike lane. Um, this came up last, I think in the last meeting in Rolling Wood, they hadn't done that initially and they said they talked to you and you suggested a four foot widening. Now my understanding from the more recent um, comprehensive, plan, comprehensive bike plan, the recommendation is now five feet. Is that uh, the case or, because I, I think Dale, your colleague in transportation has given me that advice, so I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Yes, uh, Bill Judge, transportation. The uh, yeah, the, the new standard for uh, actually marked bike lane is a is a five foot bike lane, but um, that would be NCDOT requires a minimum of sixteen feet total, so it could either be a twelve foot travel lane and a five foot by, a twelve foot travel lane and a four foot bike lane, or an eleven and a five. We generally just ask for the four feet initially because it's mostly just functioning as a paved shoulder. But okay. our intent would be ultimately that once yeah, we get the bike lane further to the north and to the south where we could stripe it as a bike lane, we'd probably come back and reduce the travel lane to 11 foot and provide a five foot bike lane. So I, I guess why not just recommend five feet now? Right. Well, or just typically DOT with the turn lane, they require a 12-foot travel lane. So we just need 16-foot total. So if the 12 and 4 provides the 16 feet, and then it could later be restriped to 11 and 5. I see. Okay, uh, so that's not, okay. All right. I, I guess it doesn't make sense to me because then it just seems like more work later on, but maybe maybe I don't quite understand that. Well, because in the interim, we're only getting for the frontage of the site, and until okay. we have enough asphalt to the north and south and on both sides of the road to actually mark it as a bike lane, I see. We can't, we can't mark it as a bike lane. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. So, uh, sorry, just to real clarify on your first question about the number of lots, we, um, we use a 20% reduction to account for the proposed road infrastructure when we're figuring that out, so that's why it came down from probably 12 to 10 when we when we did that. Okay, great, that's helpful, thanks. Um, can I, I, I wanna, since I am the BPAC liaison, I, I do wanna highlight some of their, their comments, and so this is a question for Dan. Um, I mean, the BPAC did recommend that you, uh, we've done this before where we recommend an off-site sidewalk construction, and um, uh, I, I guess you were pretty, um, concise in your response saying you're not able to commit to that. Uh, but I would like you to maybe address that. I, I mean, I know it's it's costly, but um, we do often ask for developers to go above and beyond in some ways. And I, I think given that this is relatively close to 15501, it's within walking distance of um, some businesses down there, it, you know, it may be nice to have this extension of 150 feet. Of I understand, sidewalk. understand. And, 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 and yes, I think given that the big project to the north, 100 units, is eventually going to have a lot of people who may want to go down that way, and 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 we're going to have 24. It's 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 probably a necessary, or it's not a necessary. It's probably a warranted connection, a needed connection. Um, you know, again, as I've as I've said on on other projects of modest scale, uh, 
you know, if this was a much larger project, it would make sense economically. But, um, you know, this is my clients over the years have probably put $100,000 into the payment in lieu structure for uh, sidewalks where they've been in a position where it wasn't practical to build a sidewalk or NCDOT said we don't want a sidewalk out there. And, and this is exactly what that fund is, is meant to do. It's to fill these gaps that we see all right. over Durham. So, uh, so we're, we'd, we'd still respectively say that uh, the, 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 this project shouldn't bear the, the burden of the cost of that sidewalk, but the city has funds available from many other clients of mine who have put money into the pool over the years. Would you be able, would you would you be willing to add to that uh, to, to provide funding to that um, fund mm, for this project? Any idea of what kind of money we might be talking about? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Make a recommendation yeah. to council. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Yeah, I just wanted to um, actually answer the question for Commissioner Johnson about that price point. Um, Houses in that area, three bedroom, about 3,100 square feet or about $430,000. And that's on the low end. So with today's building cost, you're looking at about 500,000 plus. I mean, that's four bedrooms, two and a half baths. Thank you for confirming. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Miller? I just had a quick question for staff. Uh, I don't remember in the past having uh, green and red printing um, <laughs> the bike ped report, and I was not certain uh, what the significance of the green was, however cheerful. <laughs> there is. We try to make it aesthetically pleasing for you. Thank you, and I appreciate it, but I still don't know who's speaking in the green. The green, the green is, um, is Dale McKeel's comments, and then the applicant's response is in red. So the bike ped request is in the black, Dale McKeel is green, and the applicant is red. Uh, let me just double check. Yep. No, I'm sorry. The, the uh, black text is Dale's, and then the applicant's is, I believe, in both, red, in both green and in red. For me. Yeah, sorry, I think I can clarify. Okay. Sorry, Bill Judge Transportation. The, uh, I believe the black text was BPAC's initial comment. Okay. Green text was a second review comment, and the red text is the applicant's response. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And now I don't feel so, quite so silly asking the question. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Seeing none at this point, I think we're ready to entertain a motion if someone's ready to move that motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case 1-7. 00044 forward to the city council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Okay. Properly motioned to case Z1700044, moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Hornbuckle. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Motion carries 11 to 0. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our second and final zoning case this evening is case number Z18, quadruple zero one. This is 5123 Chin Page Road. We'll start with the staff report. Good evening, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Um, the item before you is a zoning map change request for property located at 5123 Chin Page Road. Um, the subject site is in the city's jurisdiction. Um, this is a request submitted by Charlie Yokely with McAdams. Um, this is a request to change um, the zoning designation of one parcel, it's approximately one acre in size, from residential rural to industrial light. Um, there's no development plan associated with this, so the request, if approved, would permit any um, uses in the IL zoning district. Um, an aerial map 
of the subject site. Uh, I mean, you see the case highlighted in red. I mean, you see the Cree development a little further to the west of the site. Um, and just across the, the street is a flex sand warehouse space. Um, the, some area photos, these are also in your staff report. Um, the top three pictures kind of give a vantage point of the site, uh, or looking around the site from Chen Page Road. Um, a lovely view of the forested site in the lower left-hand corner, um, as well as the existing development um, near the site on Chin Page Road, seen as image number five. Um, <clears throat> looking at this area from the, the zoning context point of view, um, as you can see, the property surrounding this site on all sides is already is zoned industrial light. Um, the, the stretch of Chin Page Road um, is a mix of vacant properties with some industrial flex warehouse spaces. Um, you can see in the, the southeastern corner of this image, um, there's some residential that has been platted, um, but not built out yet. Um, looking at the future land use map, again, um, pretty similar to the zoning map in this area. The subject site is zoned, or I'm sorry, is flumbed industrial currently, um, as well as the surrounding properties. Um, as you go a little further north or south from the site, then you run into more um, residential development. Some IL zoning district standards, as I noted, this request does not involve a development plan. Um, so the, any development would adhere to the current ordinance standards. Um, these are some of the dimensional standards um, in the UDO for IL zoned properties. So comprehensive plan policies for this request. Um, staff reviewed three key comprehensive plan policies, the future land use map, as well as contiguous development and infrastructure capacity. We found that the request is consistent with those three items. And overall, that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And I'll be happy to answer any questions the commission may have at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will open the public hearing for this case. And we have one individual signed up, Mr. Charlie Yokely. Me. Evening, my name is Charlie Oakley, uh, 2905 Meridian Parkway in Durham. I'm with the McAdams Company. We're, rep we're representing our client for this request uh, to rezone 5123 Chin Page Road uh, from RR to IL Industrial Light. Um, the requested IL zoning matches the zoning of the all of the adjoining properties. Uh, it's sort of a pocket of residential in a uh, industrial area, industrially zoned area. Um, and it matches the uh, future land use map, land use for this property. Um, there's currently no anticipated use of the property, which is why you don't see a development plan. Um, and the request is simply to have the zoning match. Uh, the, the land, the owner of this lot owns a larger parcel adjacent to this, just to have their two parcels match zoning. Um, as stated in the staff report and by staff here tonight, this request is consistent with the UDO future land use plan and comprehensive plan and the other policies of Durham. And we ask for your support of their finding and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Sure. Would anyone else like to speak during the public hearing? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and move to the commissioners. Any commissioners who have questions or comments? I would just like Commissioner Bryan, Harris, and Miller. Commissioner Bryan. Um, Question for staff, uh, under utility impacts, this is in attachment six, uh, you talk about the fact that the zoning designation would increase the uh, consumption of water, but the numbers, the way you've given the numbers <coughs> doesn't show that. Uh, I think maybe the numbers have been reversed. Great, Commissioner Brown, you are correct. Yeah, the the total is correct, um, but yeah, the demand is flip flop there. Thank you for pointing that out, sir. And am I correct that there's a stream that goes across this property? This particular pro yes. property? Um, double check my madness. I'm not aware of a stream crossing this particular property. Okay. Well, it's it's a not a. If you look on big there. importance. 
attachment one in your, the context map shows the streams, and you'll see that there's not a blue line stream shown on this property. Okay. Uh, and a question for the applicant. I was just curious. Uh, once this has been rezoned, is there any possibility that it's going to be combined with another piece of industrial land up in the area? There's a the 31 acre parcel directly adjacent to this that is owned by the same entity. Um, mm -hmm. So they could recombine it anytime. Um, but I don't know. I don't think that's like an immediate plan to do. Okay. I would just, it, it would make sense to me. That's why right. I asked. Right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Harris? Uh, I just have one comment for staff. Thank you for attachment seven. The use permits and the industrial light zone, this is very helpful. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? Mr. Bryan asked my question. This is good. If you saw next month's agenda, you'll know that it's good to be brief tonight and bank your time tonight because we'll be here a while next month. Any other questions or comments by commissioners? I second. Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case Z1800001 forward to the city council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we adjourn, we did have one new item for new business. Commissioner Bryan? Um, it was just a question for staff. Uh, starting shortly after last month's meeting, I've begun to get all sorts of emails from the City of Durham's Human Resources Department, mm -hmm. especially about the open enrollment and stuff like that. And that confuses me because I don't see any reason they should be sending me anything. <laughs> that confuses me as well, Mr. Ryan. Uh, we'll look into that. Um, your email address is part of the alias email address for the entire Planning Commission. And I wonder if there's just been a little hiccup somewhere with the um, email groupings. So we'll check on that for you. And I did have one other thing I failed to mention. Uh, Mr. Judge would like to introduce a new staff member, if you don't mind, if you have just a minute. Sure. This is a good meeting to have a minute. Mr. Judge. So, yes, I just wanted to introduce Ms. Erlene Thomas. Uh, she's uh, started with us about six months ago doing development review. She's a professional engineer and has over 20 years experience. So um, some of you, I think, may have already interacted with her with answering a question or two, but um, she's going to be taking on more of my role here as I do other things within the department. But, Welcome aboard, and please, you're welcome to make a remark if you'd like. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you all in this new capacity. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments for the good of the order? Seeing none, I can't believe I'm saying this. At 6.06, this meeting is adjourned. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Oh, can I put my, uh, I'm my request for yeah. uh, not